Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech in our lab. In our lab today, we have we're looking at the uh, uh, BIOS, the UEFI BIOS on ASUS's P8Z77-M Pro. We took a look at the features of this board. It's a micro ATX board. It look, it's got a lot of great items for the cost. And now we're just going to take a look at the BIOS implementation that ASUS has in here. So as you can look, right now we're looking at the easy mode. This is pretty much the BIOS at a glance. You can take a look at the different options here, CPU voltage, where it's sitting right now. We do have this, this is our overclock stage. So what you're looking at right now is exactly how we have the processor overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. BIOS revision is gonna be uh, 0907. And of course, you have your different operations here. You can do um, power saving, normal, and of course, ASUS Optimal, which is gonna give you the best blend of uh, green power as well as uh, performance. Down here, of course, you have your drag and drop boot priorities, which are nice. And you just hover over it, and it's going to give you what, uh, you know, whatever option you need. Of course, in this mode, you also have your shortcuts, so you can go directly to whatever you need to. Graphics configuration, Digi Power, uh, Digi Plus Power Controls, all of that straight from the shortcut options. If you want to look at your boot menu, you can hit F8, and it's going to show you what your boot options are. Of course, you get through that. And then uh, if you want to go directly into advanced mode, you can hit F7. It's going to take you right there, or you could use the option that you saw up at the top. This is the page that you're going to come to when you first enter the BIOS. It's your main page. Of course, you have your, your uh, different options up here. Very similar to what you would have in a traditional BIOS. It's just a little bit more, it's, well, it is a graphical interface, and a little bit easier to maneuver around. So again, here we're looking at our AI tweaker. This is where you're going to in, enable your performance options, do your overclocking if that's what you're looking to do. As you can see, we've uh, played with a couple of different ones here. And we've already got our overclock set up. You have your B clock you can set up. You have your manual, uh, you know, we've got to set the manual so we can change this, adjust it however we want through manual input. Uh, ASUS doesn't use the uh, drop down menus like we see in some other options. But uh, here, you're not going to get that drop down menu. You're just going to have to manually input what you need. Uh, your multi core enhancement. This one is going to just allow you to get the most out of uh, your board if you're running everything at stock. If you're going to overclock, go ahead and turn it off. Your turbo ratios, of course, we have it set to manual because we are overclocking. And then you can set up either your ratio synchronization or you can uh, overclock by individual processor cores uh, right here. And, of course, we have everything set to 48. Your internal PLL over voltage is going to allow it to kick the, the voltage up or you can set it to auto. Uh, your CPU to bus speed... Uh, DRAM ratio, you either go 133 or 100, which you have those options there. Your IGP maximum frequency here, your power saving modes. Of course, you have your OC tuner, uh, DRAM timing control, pretty simple. All those are set to auto right now. CPU power management, these are going to give you just your options for power management inside the CPU pretty quick. Your Digi Plus VRM, this is going to be your controls for controlling the Digi Plus digital power VRM on the board. These are your uh, bigger options, CPU voltage frequency, you can change those. Manual is going to give you your option to change the frequency or set it to fixed. Uh, we left it set to auto. VRM spread spectrum, of course, we turned that off. Spread spe we're not a fan of spread spectrum. Uh, your power phase control, you can change this standard, optimize, extreme, the duty. You know, you have extreme or T-probe. T-probe is going to give you the better thermal balance. Extreme is going to give you better current balance. Current capability, this is going to let us push it up to 140%. And, you know, pretty much down the line here. All right, going back, and you can see down here you're going to be your manual voltage controls. And you have everything listed here as well as your B-clock recovery. Again, we have our CPU spread, spe spread spectrum turned off as well. Under advanced, you have the typical things you would see for advanced. Uh, advanced CPU configuration, turn hyper-threading on, virtualization on, all of that. Your PCH configuration, high precision timer, rapid start, smart connect, those options are going to be in here. SATA controls, uh, one of the nice things we like is AHCI is turned on by default. It's going to show you what you have plugged in and what options you have open. Your system agent is going to be where you find your graphics configuration. Of course, you can get to there through your shortcuts. Here's where you set everything up. You have this, the IGP multi-monitor. You turn this on if you want to use the uh, Lucid Logic's uh, Virtue MVP software going to allow you to utilize the processor core for graphics that's in the CPU as well as an add-in graphics card. And you can do that through different profiles that are set up in the software. The Northbridge PCIe configuration, it's going to show you what your links are. It's going to show you, uh, you can also select which generation you want. Auto is going to allow the motherboard to determine which generation it is and give you the best performance there. USB, pretty self-explanatory. 
Uh, onboard devices, again, you know, there's nothing here that's out of the ordinary. APM, advanced power management, and of course your network stack. So this is le uh, letting it know whether UFI is going to enable the network stack or if it's going to use, uh, you know, just the one that's in the operating system. So here we have our monitor, the CPU temperature monitor, motherboard, all of that, as well as your Q fan controls. If you have any of these set to uh, any of the manual profiles, this can uh, inter uh, impact the performance of the fan expert that's in the AI suite. So of course we have our CPU disabled. We can enable that and it's going to allow us to pretty much adjust all of these leaving it standard and then we have different options once we're inside Windows for controlling those fans. All right, moving on to our boot menu. Pretty much the same thing. There's nothing here that's out of the ordinary, nothing here that's unusual. So it's, you know, pretty much just a straightforward BIOS. You, on the tools, you have your Easy Flash, OC profile, the SPD information. Again, this is going to show you what your memory is, your JDEC specification as well as what any XMP profiles that are on here. Again, it's important to remind you that the XMP specification, where this memory is uh, Kingston 1600 megahertz memory, it actually is rated by JDEC spec for only 1333. So when we drop this in here and we power up the board for the first time, it's going to detect it at 1333 until we set it to 1600. It's not a fault of the board, it's not a fault of the processor, it's actually the memory that's, registered, that's identifying itself as only being 1333 megahertz. So that's something that we're going to see. We should see some 1600 megahertz JDEC spec memory out later, uh, later this year, perhaps uh, G-Skill, uh, uh, Giel, Kingston, all of those companies will release those and those will be specifically for Ivy Bridge in order to take care of that default 1600 megahertz memory setting that they have built in. But for right now, if you're using uh, any memory, even if it's rated at 2400 megahertz, its default JDEC spec is going to pop up at 1333. So that pretty much covers everything that's in the BIOS as far as the general screens. I want to take a look real quick over here down at the side. You have some shortcuts. We talked about the F3 shortcut. F10 has, of course, always been save and uh, uh, exit. So you're going to get that. But you also have, of course, in, your, in the BIOS here, the ability to print screen. As long as you have a properly formatted USB key, which is a FAT32 formatted USB key, you can hit F12 and it's going to save a bitmap print screen of this to that key by number. You're not going to be able to name it or anything like that. It's just going to pop up and say, do you want to save it to this device? You tell it yes and you're, and you're done. If you are looking to post these up on the internet, be advised that most of the images we've seen have been about 2 megs or larger. Uh, the largest one we saw was 2.5 megs. So you're going to want to transfer that or change it over to a JPEG so it's a little bit more uh, internet friendly. So that covers everything that we've got here. Uh, we did talk about the fan controls and we'll talk about those more in our write-up which that link is directly below here. As always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share with your friends and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.